uh, swaps uh, so the agenda for this uh, this this uh, video is uh, meaning of swaps what does it mean and what are the different types of swaps so types of swaps includes uh, credit default swaps interest rate swaps currency swaps and equity return swaps also called as equity swaps okay so number one so what do you mean by swaps so swaps first of all is an over-the-counter derivative contract that is otc contract wherein two parties exchange cash flows based on the agreed conditions so, so the exchange cash flows so how is it possible they exchange only the cash flows how is it possible that's what we will be seeing now see that is x there is y okay so x will give away some cash and y will give away some cash and in between they will make profit and loss so how is how is this possible uh, that's what we will be seeing now in types of swaps once you understand types of swaps it will be clear for you okay so that is swaps both the parties will will exchange cash flows okay so types of swaps are credit default swaps interest rate swaps currency swaps and equity return swaps so let's start with credit default swaps now cds credit default swaps now in credit default swaps what happens is imagine your portfolio manager a portfolio manager he has invested in some bond junk bond imagine so junk bonds are basically risky bonds where the rate of return will be very high but at the same time it will be too risky as well let's say this portfolio manager has invested into a junk bond where it is offering 12 percentage rate of interest however this portfolio manager is you know a bit scared that what if this this bond this company defaults in in the payment of interest it will affect uh, the investors so the portfolio manager enters into an agreement with an investment bank and he says that he will he will keep paying premium okay so it, it's just like similar to life insurance okay so so we are scared that uh, something will happen to our life and so it will impact our family so we enter into an agreement with a with a life insurance company and we pay premium similarly portfolio manager is scared that you know something might happen to these investments uh, which might lead to the losses for the investors so he is entering into an agreement with an investment bank saying that he will pay some part of this amount which is called as technically called as premium so typically premium is paid in this way like you know it is based on LIBOR rate plus one percentage or two percentage this extra one percentage or two percentage this is called a spread so LIBOR plus spread so this is technically called as premium so this premium will be paid by the portfolio manager to the investment bank every year and in case if the uh, if if the underlying asset that is this bond gets defaulted okay so in that case the in the investment bank will compensate the portfolio manager they will compensate the portfolio manager it is just like that you know i have taken uh, life insurance and if something happens to my life you know they will compensate my family similarly okay so so what is happening over here portfolio manager has swapped swapped the swapped the credit risk of the underlying asset credit risk so credit risk credit risk of the underlying asset in this case junk bond so this is credit default swaps so credit default swaps you know is a type of swap wherein uh, you know this portfolio manager is, is swapping the risk from him he has swapped to the investment bank okay this portfolio manager is called as the protection protection um, buyer because he is going to pay premium so he is buying protection and this investment bank is called as protection seller protection seller because they are receiving cash and they are taking the risk okay so they are protection uh, protection seller right so this is credit default swaps now the articulation goes like this credit default swaps is a type of swap wherein protection buyer will keep paying premium uh, will keep paying premium paying word is missing will keep paying premium to the protection seller if the credit even gets triggered protection seller will have to pay compensation to the protection buyer as per the agreement for whatever amount they have agreed upon so what could be those credit event example default in interest payment or it can even be downgrading of uh, the ratings of the uh, of the bond 
So imagine it's a normal bond, um, no, no uh, um, investment grade bond, and then getting defaulted to a junk bond. So even at that case, uh, credit even will get triggered, and uh, the investment bank will have to pay compensation to the portfolio manager. Or it could also be moratorium period. So moratorium period means cooling of period where you know company is not going to pay you interest for some reason you know for six months um, uh, you know so in such cases also even can get triggered and the investment bank will have to pay you imagine companies health is deteriorating highly and for some reason they are not able to pay you for six months three months or one year so in that case moratorium period period will get triggered can investment banks will pay next one is interest rate swaps now interest rate swaps interest rate swaps uh, now in an interest rate swaps there is again x there is y x will pay you know one leg of the cash flow is interest rate the second leg will also be the interest rate so one leg can be let's say fixed interest rate fixed interest rate let's say you know something like four percentage the other leg can be something like floating interest rate floating rate so what is that floating rate floating rate will keep changing so depending upon what so it will be indexed to some other reference rate example in this case LIBOR so LIBOR London interbank offer rate so whatever be the LIBOR rate accordingly Y has to pay to X and X will keep paying the fixed rate the so fixed rate is called as this he is called as the payer he is paying fixed rate okay and he will be called as the receiver the one who is receiving fixed rate okay so x will keep paying uh, fixed rate and in case you know imagine this is for three years contract so first year fixed rate is three percentage and floating rate is imagine it is you know uh, it is six percentage so in this case who will uh, gain uh, mr x will gain how because he is paying only four percentage whereas he is receiving 6%. So typically, X will gain if the interest rate is going up. If the floating rate is going up, X will gain and vice versa. So if the floating rate is coming down, so instead of 6%, imagine it is only 3%. So in that case, X is paying 4% and he is receiving only 3%. So he will lose uh, uh, 1%. When X is losing 1%, it is gained by Y. So that means Y Y will expect the interest rate to come down, the floating rate to come down. X will expect the interest rate to go up. So accordingly, you know, one will make profit and uh, one will make loss in this case. Okay. Now, should it be only fixed to floating? Not necessary. Now, in this case, this is fixed to floating interest rate. Fixed to floating interest rate. But should it be always fixed to floating interest rate? Not necessary. It can even be floating to floating also. So how floating to floating will work? X, Y. So X will pay, let's say, you know, um, Euribor rate, which is your floating rate. Euribor rate, European Interbank Offer Rate. And in return, he will receive LIBOR rate, which is also your floating rate. Both are floating rates. Okay. So if Euribor is 5% and if... Uh, uh, if LIBOR is 4 percentage, so in this case, uh, in this case, X will pay 5 and receive 4. That means X will lose. Okay. And if LIBOR is 6 percentage, then in this case, X will gain 1 percentage, right? Because he is getting 6 and he is paying 5. So, he will gain 1 percentage. Okay. And if LIBOR is 5, no, no gain, no loss. Okay. For both. Right. So, this uh, interest rate is called floating to floating interest rate as both are both the reference rates are floating floating to floating to floating interest rates floating to floating interest rates okay so it can be fixed to floating it can be floating to floating it can also be uh, let's say it can also be fixed to fixed even this is possible so fixed rate Okay, so he's paying fixed rate, X is paying fixed rate, even he is receiving fixed rate. Then how do we calculate profit and loss? Now, here, you know, profit and loss will be calculated based on the difference in currencies. So, they are paying fixed rate, but the currency will be different. 
so difference currency difference will be there so based on the difference in the currency they will make profit and loss so here also fixed rate fixed rate however currencies will be different okay so this is called fixed to fixed interest rate fixed to fixed interest rate okay so in this case i am just explaining in this video i am just explaining you the basics of uh, you know interest rates uh, swaps otherwise there is a detailed video if you want you can click on the above link there is a detailed video about uh, about you know the entire bigger picture about interest rate swaps how you know exactly they get the benefit why they are entering into the interest rate swaps all those has been explained in the above link you can click and watch it in case you know if you want the detailed idea but otherwise for basics even this this uh, should be fine okay so this is interest rate swaps now how do we articulate it so it is a type of otc swaps uh, wherein two parties exchange cash flows based on the interest uh, rates so netting happens between the counterparties and it is cash settled and one more thing in an interest rate swaps uh, principal amount okay so now i said you know uh, x is paying here four percentage and receiving three percentage three percentage of what so the principal amount now this principal amount imagine it is you know one million dollar so if it is one million dollar three percentage of one million dollar four percentage of one million dollar this is four percentage this is three percentage they will calculate but what about this principal amount they will never exchange the principal amount okay this principal amount will never be exchanged that's why this principal amount is called as notional principal notional means something assumed okay assumed principal principal amount will never be exchanged this principal amount will never be exchanged in an interest rate swaps only the difference in the interest rates you know will be uh, taken as the profit and loss okay so this is notional uh, principle so interest rate is calculated on the notional principle as the principal amount is not exchanged right so the next one is currency swaps now currency swaps so currency swaps um, again i am just explaining the basics uh, you know as of now i'll make a detailed video about currency swaps as well so imagine x y so x uh, let me take another example imagine us and facebook and you know india let's say uh, reliance now us us wants to set up uh, you know uh, facebook from us wants to set up your business in india so they are in need of uh, rupee and reliance from india wants to set up a business in uh, in us so they need dollar now if reliance converts all its rupees to dollar it will incur a huge conversion cost conversion cost is the cost incurred to convert from uh, rupee to dollar similarly facebook will incur a huge conversion cost to convert from uh, you no know, dollar to rupee so what they can do over here is they they both can enter into uh, currency swaps so wherein so let's say this is facebook and uh, this is reliance so facebook will give you know do, uh, facebook will give dollar and reliance will give uh, rupee so how much let's say the exchange rate is one dollar is equal to 75 and so 75 rupees and so facebook will give one dollar reliance will give 75 rupees based on the exchange rate they will exchange this currency so in this case see in the currency swaps principal amount is exchanged currency swaps principal amount is exchanged principal amount is exchanged in currency swaps okay now after this what happens imagine they have they have uh, exchanged this and this contract is for something like you know two years so if this is for two years how you have to understand is it is as good as facebook is giving lending you know dollar to rupee uh, do, uh, dollar to reliance and borrowing rupee from reliance 
okay so they both are lending and borrowing to each other facebook is lending dollar and borrowing rupee similarly reliance is uh, you know borrowing dollar and lending rupee that's how you have to look at it so when they are when they are lending and borrowing obviously then they have to pay interest rate as well so as it is for two years contract this is so end of the first year the facebook facebook will pay interest so imagine they will pay interest interest uh, to reliance okay and reliance will also pay interest so what is the difference difference will be facebook uh, will pay you know imagine the rupees and this is the dollar okay so as per their agreement they are going to exchange this okay similarly at the end of the second year also facebook will pay interest to reliance for using their rupee and similarly reliance will pay uh, interest to facebook for using uh, facebook's dollar at the end of the contract period that is two years over now now facebook will return the principal borrowed um, borrowed money borrowed principal borrowed amount so facebook what did they borrow they borrowed uh, they borrowed rupees 75 so that will be paid back to reliance and reliance what did it do it borrowed dollar one dollar so that will be again you know given back one dollar so whatever money they borrowed uh, against each other that is paid back like this the contract gets over this is currency uh, swaps okay so that means moral of the story interest rate swaps can also be a part of the currency swaps this is interest rate swaps which can also be a part of the currency swap so this part and this part are currency swaps in between what you are seeing this all these are interest rate swaps so interest rate swaps can be a part of currency swaps okay Yeah, so currency swaps is a type of swap wherein two parties exchange cash flows based on the currency. It happens basically between two parties who are in need of each other's currency for business reasons. Interest rate swaps can also be a part of um, such agreements. All right. Then equity return swaps also called as equity swaps. Now what happens under equity swaps is. So there is, you know, X, there is Y. So X will pay, let's say, fixed rate um, five percentage, and in return, Y has to pay, let's say, Nifty's return or any other index, Nifty index or any equities return also. Okay, equities, any other company's return. Okay, let's say, uh, let's say, Apple's return. So Apple company's return, Y has to pay. So if Apple's return is or Nifty's return is like something like, you know, 7 percentage. So in that case, so in that case, X gets the benefit. In that case, X gets the benefit. Okay, because X is getting 7 and he is paying uh, 5 percentage. And if Apple's return or the index's return is, let's say, 3 percentage. So in that case, Y gets the benefit because uh, y will receive five percentage whereas he has to pay only three percentage okay so this is equity return swaps now what is equity return swaps as in like one leg of the cash flow should be based on index or equity the other leg can be fixed the other leg can be floating also doesn't matter the other leg can be floating the other leg can be again you know both the legs can be equities even that is fine equities or index so one is based on nifty another one is based on sensex that is also absolutely fine so this is this is nifty okay and second one is sensex this is also absolutely okay so the condition is one leg of the cash flow should be based on equities so in that case it is called as equity swaps or equity return swaps okay so now the articulation is type of swap wherein one leg of the cash flow is based on index or equity whereas the other leg is based on fixed or floating or it can also be equity okay anything is fine all right so this is it thank you so much thank you for your time thanks a lot